Now, I've got a pretty old-fashioned attitude towards public debate. If you reckon you've got something to say, I reckon you ought to be prepared to advocate those causes anywhere within reason. You've got to be prepared to discuss your ideas, present your arguments to those you know will disagree with you. I mean, that's the essence of civil discourse, isn't it? That's a fundamental precondition for the contest of ideas. Turn up and respectfully argue your case. Tease out the arguments with those who see things differently. How else do you test your ideas? How else do you prompt anyone else to reconsider their views? That's why I've accepted invitations to go on television shows like Q&A or other ABC programs. It's like going into the lion's den at times, but it shouldn't be, but it is. And you go there because you've got to be prepared to argue your case. I've advocated an Indigenous voice, for instance, at a quadrant dinner, knowing that not a single person in the room would be agreeing with me. And I'm happy to talk common sense on climate policy to the ABC on the very rare occasions they would want to hear it. You turn up for the contest of ideas. It's our duty, surely, if we're in public debate, turn up, don't run away, don't hide in a little bubble with your like-minded friends. But increasingly these days, people just want to stay in their own silos, their own echo chambers. It's a pretty sad state of affairs and not good for democracy or civil society. This pathetic approach reached new heights on the weekend, with this column by former ABC radio host John Fain writing in The Age. The surprising offer from Sky News that I had to refuse was the headline. Now, the background here is that with the ABC turning 90, year olds, 90 years old next month, it's its 90th anniversary on July the 2nd, I'm working on a documentary looking at its role, how the ABC developed, where it's drawn criticism, how it might be improved in the future. Obviously, it's easy to find critics, but I want the discussion, I want the debate. I wanted to hear also from ABC leaders, from management, from journalists and supporters. But almost all of them have run for cover. And as it happens, John Fain was one of the ex-ABC presenters my producer emailed to see if he might join the discussion. Now, it's hard to believe anyone could be triggered by such a request, especially someone who spent their whole working life interviewing people on ABC radio. But Fain apparently found the request a little daunting, a little triggering, and rather than just decline, he decided to write a column saying he was not going to give us an interview and then tipping a kind of lowbrow, leftist, divisive bucket on us. He objected to me doing the interview, even though we've never met, but he has described me as an avowed sledger of the national broadcaster, which is OK, I suppose, a bit of a tabloid exaggeration, but I am a prominent critic, much less trenchant than many, all the same, and when I criticise the ABC, I quote facts and examples. Fain just rants like a Twitter troll. Most journalists and commentators in this country don't like to criticise the ABC because it's so powerful. The ABC sometimes tries to trash the reputation of its critics, for instance, and perhaps more importantly, a lot of journalists know they might need a job there one day. So the ABC is left alone by most. But anyway, back to John Fain. It's beyond parody, really, because his column about nothing was turned over to nothing but a, a nasty rant against Sky News. Think about that. We invite him on for a chat so he can air his green left perspective on the ABC and his response is to tip a bucket on Sky News Australia. Somehow he links us to what he calls the Brexit calamity and enabling Donald Trump's appalling regime and his attempted coup. I would have thought UK and US voters had a say on those matters. He then says Sky Australia is a megaphone for shallow populism amplifying anxiety about immigration, climate change, any progressive social policy. Well, apart from being demonstrably wrong, as you know, I'm a big Australia, high immigration advocate and a supporter of gay marriage and of the Indigenous voice, so clearly Fane doesn't watch, he just makes stuff up. And really, if Fane thinks any media organisation amplifies anxiety about climate change, he really ought to examine the hysteria on the ABC. Anyway, in his spiel, Fain then turned his sights on me, saying I'm the wrong person to look at the ABC because not only have I accused it of bias, but I've consistently expressed resolute hostility to the national broadcaster. What a precious petal. 
This is a billion dollar a year public broadcasting behemoth with 4,000 staff and countless TV, radio and online platforms and it's threatened by one commentator? The resolute hostility of little old me? More like poking the bear, I reckon. It's hard to fathom how ABC types who attack their chosen targets en masse, who hunt together as a pack, armed with taxpayer-funded jobs for life and armies of ABC lawyers, it's hard to fathom how they're so brittle in the face of any criticism. Remember, all we did was ask this professional interviewer for an interview. The fact that people like Fame don't feel capable of defending the ABC against claims of bias and that they can't even muster the courage to leave their cabal of green left mates and discuss the issues and make their case in public debate, well, that just goes to show how insular and inbred the ABC just might have become. The ABC is supposed to be able to engage with all Australians. But Fane has proven very clearly how it simply refuses to do so.